Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. We're here at the Pixelcore Studios in beautiful downtown Petaluma. And today we're going to be looking at um, media managing motion files, right? Yeah, that makes it sound kind of boring. <laughs> it, does. it is boring, but... I hear it's you not. Got, it's cool. I hear he's going to break out the terminal. Yeah, we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of terminal. So, so let's <laughs> let's back up a little bit because right. um, the basic idea is, like you have talked about before, a lot about how to move Final Cut Pro projects and events and share them so people can work on the same project and they're in different locations. Different locations, right? Yeah. But sometimes we we need to share custom motion effects that we've created. Right. And if well. you don't move them, they're going to show up offline They'll in your be project. Offline. Right. Right. If, like you, a... if you use any of the ones that are built into Final Cut, you're fine. But as soon as you have a third party plugin that you're using, or you've downloaded a free effect, or, or you've, you've modified created, it, one. Or you've modified right. one. Right. So um, what I want to do is talk about how you can uh, move and share those, um, move them, share them with other people, and actually have multiple people access the same ones uh, all together, even on a sand. Uh, even on an Xan, yes. Okay. So, so what we're talking about is down here in the in the bottom right hand corner, Final Cut Pro 10. We have these different browsers. We've got one for effects, we've got one for transitions, we've got one for titles, and one for generators. And then the themes browser holds collections of all those right. things. Now, there's a bunch that are in there by default, but uh, you can install third parties. Like I've got this Crumple Pop set of uh, third party ones. The Lucas Light Kit is another one I've got installed. And then you can make your own. Uh, so if you go down to testing, you know, I was doing a little test with one. Or you, another one to make your own is like if you right click and choose open a copy in motion, it will do exactly this it will make a copy. So any modifications you make to it are saved. But these are, are unique to you. So if you use them in your project and you give somebody else a project on Final Cut Pro 10, like you said, right. offline, 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 right. So here's what we do. The first thing I want to do is go to where these are stored. Which is a good thing to know, by the way. Yes, very good to know where they're stored. As opposed to Final Cut Pro projects and events that can be on any drive, right? Mm -hmm. Any drive. Any drive you want. Motion has uh, to exist in one place and one place alone. Yes. So it's in the user movies folder. Uh -huh. And there it is, motion, motion templates. templates. And you notice I've kind of color coded things. So I'm using green to represent where the good stuff lives. Mm -hmm. And then these Final Cut events hidden, Final Cut projects hidden are based on using a project called Event Manager X. Yeah. Um, from Intelligent Assistance, which is a great way to, to manage kind of which projects show up in Final Cut Pro. I also have a moved motion templates folder. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, motion templates is where these things have to live. Now, if you've never created any of your own custom ones, this folder might not be here. Or if it is, you know, some of these folders might be empty. But if you look in here, I've got a variety of stuff, and these are either ones that I've created or we've created, like this Ripple Training Classic Generators, or as mm -hmm. a free download on our website. Um, testing things, and then there's some third-party ones, okay, uh, that are in here as well. So you can see all these different generators. If I go into titles, we've got Ripple Collins, Ripple Optics, our plugins are in there. So this is a bunch of different things I have. And so the first thing is, what if I, I, I want to share them or I don't even want to see them? Like, as opposed to Final Cut projects, you know, yeah, I can drag them down into this move motion template. So I have a bunch of other ones down here that I don't want to see. Right. Right. I kind of have them turned off by moving them here. One caveat about that is if you use any plugins from um, Noise Industries using FX Factory, the FX Factory application. No, you can't put them in there. You can move them in there. But they'll move them back. They'll, move, they'll find their way back. It'll move them back. It's like for bad you. luggage. It never goes yeah, away. Yeah. So if you've ever been confused, about that, like right. you had some motion templates and you deleted them or you dragged them out of this folder here and then you relaunched uh, Final Cut Pro and you, they're back again. Like, why are they back? I don't want to see all that stuff. This is, this is a good tip for you. Um, the way you do, you launch FX Factory and FX Factory is basically a platform for managing plugins. And you can see here, um, I have most of them turned off. This is where you manage them. So here's our Callouts and Optics plugins. You know, if I turn this off here, uh, the next time I launch Final Cut Pro, it won't be in there anymore. Right. And it won't be in that folder. It will move it out for me. And if I turn it on, it'll add it back in. So the way to manage your plugins with it, that are from oh, FX, FX Factory. Factory is to turn them on and off here. So that's that's one thing I want to make really clear, is that's how you have to manage uh, those particular plugins, including, including ours. So um, if you just want to give somebody a template, you can say, let's say I want to give this uh, one called uh, in stylize here, this super eight millimeter copy. I can just take this folder and give it to somebody. Right. 
They can stick it in the same location on their computer. It'll, it'll work. work. It'll right. work. Done. So that part's easy. And they easy. don't need motion. And they don't need motion. Okay. Uh, they just, don't want need to be, motion. just want to be clear. Yeah, that's very important. That's actually very important. They don't need motion. So it's easy to share them. You can zip it up and email it to somebody, create a cool effect, and say, hey, use this in your next thing. Got it. It's, it's fantastic. But the question is, like, what if you don't want to store them on your, on your hard drive locally? Okay, either because they take a lot of space, which in general they don't. This is only a few hundred megs here. Right. But let's say you, you don't want it. You could have quite a few of them, several yeah. gigs. Yeah, so either you don't want it locally or you want multiple people to access the exact same thing. Right. Okay, so here's what you do. So I have on my computer, I have attached a, a FireWire drive. Okay, nice, just nice. A, it's a Thunderbolt connected FireWire drive. So, that. you know, it's an old, um, old drive here. And uh, what I'm going to do is find it first, it's called bring it, and select it. There we go, no, yes, no, there we go. Took a minute there. Um, so it really has nothing on it but some Final Cut camera archives, okay? So you might think, hey, I could put everything over there and just create an alias. So what I'm gonna do is I could just say, hey, I'm just gonna take this whole thing and drag it over here, motion templates, Okay, it shouldn't take too long to copy. It's it's not that big. Oh, I've got I guess I got some extra stuff in there now because it's two point six seven gig. I think I've copied some extra things in the last couple. Oh, of lessons. thing. It's oh. two point six seven oh, gig, so it's actually fairly big. So what I want to do now is you think create an alias to this thing. So the original one here, so that we're really clear what's going on. I'm going to take this original one and I'm going to zip it. I'm going to choose just compress, and I'm not. I could rename it so that Final Cut can't see it, but renaming it is actually going to be. Um, problematic because that motion templates folder has a hidden extension. Okay, if I do a get info in it on it, pick the right folder. You're really getting propeller heavy in this. I one, know. I know. If I do a get info on it, you'll see that it actually has a dot localized extension that's ah, kind of hidden. Got it. And if you rename that folder. It'll and then lose the dot localized. It will. Even if you just like put a little X in front and, re and then take it away again. I it'll sense get rid the of terminal's that. coming. Yeah, it, well, it, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. Okay, so now uh, I've made a zip copy and I'm going to delete the original one. Okay, it's gone. Whoa. Yeah, it's, it seems a little scary. Now, uh, just to prove to you that it's gone, the first thing I'm going to do, if I were to launch Final Cut now, FX Factory would say, wait a minute, all my plugins are missing, and would go ahead and create a new motion templates folder oh, and stick them and all put in them again. All back in yeah, there. and I don't really want it to do that. Do you so, have to trick FX Factory? No, so yeah, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna launch FX Factory, and I'm gonna turn the only ones I have turned on are these two guys and these guys down here. Okay. So I'm gonna just turn those off. They're all turned off. Quit. So if I launch Final Cut Pro now, and we go to, for instance, the effects browser, you'll see all of those third-party plugins and my own are gone. Yep, they're okay, okay, they're gone because it cannot see. I'll quit Final Cut again. It cannot see uh, the motion that motion templates are over there now. They can't. Right, and again, it's not going to. I deleted the folder, and look. Uh, FX Factory still created a new motion templates folder here, but everything's empty. Right. Right? Because it, so it just said, nah, nah, hey, nah, it's nah, missing nah. it. Right. So, so it I, don't, I don't need that. I'm just going to delete that. Okay. So, here's, okay. so here's the point of all this. You think you could just create an alias by, you know, you can command option drag this thing over to make, I'm holding down the command and option create an right. alias. But that localized is going to be it, missing. It, well, it's not just that. It, it's, it's just not going to work. Okay. Um, because uh, we have to make what's called a symbolic link. <laughs> okay. And a symbolic are you being symbolic? Link, <laughs> symbolic links are a lot right. like aliases, but yeah. they're a little bit different. And we don't have time to go into the differences, but here's, here's the thing. It's really actually quite easy. So I'm going to launch Terminal. If you've never launched Terminal before, it's, not in, it's in Applications and then in utilities. utilities. So if you go Shift-Command-U, it'll jump right to Utilities. Shift-Command-U for Utilities, and there's Terminal. Okay? Command-O, I'm going to open it. It looks scary. Okay, but all we're going to do is we're using one little line. The command is actually LNS for link symbolic. We're going to make one little line. Okay. But the first thing we have to do is tell terminal what folder we want that to happen in. Right. And rather than type anything, what I'm going to do is just you take. You can drag stuff into the. Yeah, terminal. you can drag stuff. So I'm just going to drag my movies folder right there. Okay. Got it. And then um, hit return. And it now I'm now in the movies folder. Got it. Okay. So the next step is uh, I have a little, and th this is the key part here. This is the line that you want to use. So ln is a link, minus s is a symbolic link, and then volumes is the highest level. Then the, the new disk you have to put in what the new disk is. So my disk is called bring it. Yeah. Okay. You had to put an underscore, huh? Yeah, yeah. I put an underscore in the actual name of it. Oh, you can in, see, on the see down drive. there. Got yeah. It. 
Yeah, and I make sure there's a capital I. Okay. And then the folder. Now here's another kind of key thing. You don't want to use this motion templates folder, okay? So I'm going to create a new folder and just call it templates. And this is the one extra piece, like, why am I doing this extra piece? You, you have to, OK? So I'm just going to put these in their own folder there and get rid of this one completely. Okay. So they're in a folder called templates. OK, folder, uh, bring it, folder. And the folder name is templates. So I have to change that. So all I'm doing is using this little line as kind of a, a template for this is the disk, and this is the name of the folder that I want the, the symbolic link to point to. Now, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Now, all those slashes going the right direction, you got forward slashes and back I know, slashes. it's crazy, but this just means there's a space between motion okay. templates. So I'm going to copy this, and um, then I'm going to go to terminal, and let's zoom in close so we can see it, and I'm going to paste, and hit return. Okay? We're done with terminal. Let's just see if it worked. Let's go back to um, our movies folder, and we now have, look, motion templates.localized. And that little, that little guy there. And in fact, if I double click on that, it brings us to, I'll hold the command key down on the top. You can see it's bringing us to the, Bring it. that firewire disk. And it's bringing us right to the folder we want it to. Wow. So now, technically, let me actually also go back to um, FX Factory to turn those other plugins back right. on. Because the cool thing about this is FX Factory will see it, will, will install everything in the right place. It won't, it won't create an extra folder or anything. It should put it in the bring it volume because yes. that's, where, that's where the symbolic link yes. is. And by the way, when, when you're talking about uh, third party products, you know, if you're going to you make sure to read your license agreement before you go ahead and post these on a server for multiple people to access yeah, that's them. That's a sure, really, really good point. Yeah, make sure before you're sharing them yeah. or, or putting them in a shared well, environment. You'll probably find that the prisons now are better than they were in the 30s, so you'll be all right. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, launch Final right. Cut Pro uh -huh. and, and see. Now, obviously, I'm doing this on a FireWire drive. I'm not doing it on an XAN. Sure. And but I, the principle's the same. The principle's the same. It should work. I've talked to several people who have told me that it works for them in an XAN environment. So you mount your XAN volume, you, you create the symbolic link pointing this to that XAN volume. Okay? One thing, um, if, if FX Factory sees a change, it will relaunch Final Cut Pro two times. It'll launch Final Cut Pro, quit it, and launch it again, just to make sure Final Cut's cleaning everything out. It Got does it. a safety check. I, hopefully that won't have to do that in the future. So there we are. I'm back in Final Cut Pro. Let's look down in the Titles browser. And there's my Ripple callouts, my Ripple optics. Okay. Wow. Um, if I go to uh, you know, the all and go to basics, there's my black and white copy. And they're all uh, pointing to that the drive. Yeah, so everything works now. And all of my effects now, instead of looking um, you know, here in the movies folder, are now just pointing over and looking under the drive. Wow. So now I can just keep everything on that drive and, and point to that the whole time. Or put it in an XAN and then multiple This seems like a them. great trick to mess with people that you want to move their motion templates and then. You could, re you could make some yeah. okay. bad, you can bad do some, make some people You can do some unhappy. bad yeah. things yeah. in the terminal, but yeah. uh, you please <laughs> use your powers for good and not evil. <laughs> so, anyway, we, that was a lot to digest. Yes. Maybe you want to watch a few times. I know I'm going to need to watch it a few times. Um, but we also have some excellent high level motion training if you want to just get that. Yeah. Ripple and training basics, too. And basics, we start yes. from, from the yeah. beginning. This for is you tweak of... heads, you're going to love this. Yeah. Uh, you work on an XN or shared volumes, it's excellent. Uh, but that was an excellent tutorial. Good. I really, really yeah. like it. So thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. And check out rippletraining.com.